I'm Rod Serling. You're listening to The Zero Hour. Rest your eyes. Exercise your imagination. This week, Bill S. Ballinger's best-selling novel, The Pursuit of a Damned Couple. The Wife of the Red-Haired Man. Starring Patty B. Gaston. John Astor. And Howard Duff. Elliot Lewis's production of The Zero Hour. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Zero Hour. Sponsored in part by the makers of Quaker State Motor Oil and National Presto Industries. This is The Zero Hour on Mutual Radio. shipping agents, everywhere where Mercedes Turner might be seen. Meanwhile, I began to check into the missing woman's background, searching for some clue to her whereabouts. Mercedes Turner's maiden name was Clinton. Her home had been in Mountain Forge, Connecticut. I drove up there. The police station was across the street from the railroad depot. I parked and went inside. Not a state officer. I need cooperation from the local police. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm uh, looking for Chief Novak. Speaking to him. You the officer called me from New York? Williams, that's right. How long did it take you? Less than three hours. Too close. We folks here feel about city cops. <laughs> well, I just realized I was in a popularity contest. Uh, Mercedes Turner, you said on the phone. Yes. You know her? Yeah. And she was a little girl. Name was Clinton before she was married. What was she like? Nice kid. Real pretty, lively. Blonde hair, big blue eyes. Did you ever get in any trouble around here? Nope. Caution her once in a while against speeding the mic too fast. Lyman Clinton, her dad, gave her a little yellow car when she first went away to school. Drove it all over. Real fast sometimes. Now, you know kids. Uh, Clinton's are pretty well off. Uh, don't worry where the next meal's coming from. Old family in these parts? Tolerable. Four or five generations. Was uh, Mercedes an only child? Yeah. Light of Lyman's eye. Mighty proud of her. Maybe a mite too proud. How's that? I sort of always figured he knew what was best. Nothing good enough for her, in Lyman's view, regardless what she wanted. You believe she uh, shot her own husband? I don't know. What's your opinion? If she wanted too bad enough, she might have. Except one thing don't line up what I know about Mercedes. What's that? Well, she was brung up proper, knows right and wrong. And maybe she got mad on blazes. Even had good enough reason to shoot her husband. But if she did it, she'd take a medicine. She'd walk in and hand you the gun. Well, you see. You see what I mean when you meet a daddy. We left Hugh's terrible little room hand in hand, like young lovers off on an adventure. I knew we had to get out of the city, and so did Hugh. We took a bus across the river to Jersey City and got off on a bleak street lined with huge car lots, garages, auto parts stores, crawling and sprawling beside one another. We bought an afternoon newspaper, ducked into a shabby little diner and ordered coffee. Here it is, see? They found it. 
Yes. But they don't know about you. They're looking for a woman alone. They're looking for me. Mercy? After I left last night... I took you... every picture of myself I could find and Albert's gun and threw them away. Ah, that's good. Now, got to get away from here. Where should we go? Anywhere. It doesn't matter. Just leave before they find out about me. Yes. I thought we'd buy a car. That's, that's good. That's good. The police will expect you to take a plane or a bus or whatever. All right. Wait for me. I'll get a car. Be careful. Be very careful. I'm going to give you... Chief Novak and I had lunch, and then I called New York and talked to scores. He got me all points bulletin out on Mercedes Turner with her description and was in the tedious business of checking out everywhere she might have gone. Friends, neighbors, stores, everything. So far, he'd come up empty. The woman had simply disappeared. I was approaching the puzzle from the other direction, trying to find a connecting thread from her earlier days. Chief Novak drove me out to her father's house, a big old farmhouse set back from the road by a twisting gravel drive. Huge trees towered over the house like great leafy umbrellas. Come in. Simon Clinton, the woman's father, was tall and thin. That stooped. He had a long, thin face with creases running from cheek to nose. Snow white hair. He led Novak and me into a study out the big living room. He motioned us to a couple of worn, shiny leather chairs and seated himself behind an old fashioned roll top desk. It was a genteel, a Christian background for a woman I was beginning to suspect of murder. Chief Novak says you want to talk about my daughter. That's right, Mr. Clinton. Now, before we get started, if I did know anything, I doubt I'd tell you. Furthermore, I'll never believe she shot Albert Turner. Did you have any reason to shoot him? None I know about. It. Anyone else want to shoot him? No. You hesitate. Just thinking. Would uh, Mrs. Clinton have any information? Quite sure she wouldn't. Miss Clinton's uh, gone now. Very better than five years. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Uh, when was the last time you saw your daughter? A couple of weeks ago. Dinner one night in the city. You see her often? My daughter and I are very close. Sometimes she comes up here or else I... I go to New York. When did she marry Albert Turner? A little over a year ago. Do you have a picture of her? No. Not even a wedding picture? You heard me. I don't like pictures. Well, there's one over there. Mrs. Clinton? Yes. That's the exception. And if you had a picture of Mercedes, you wouldn't give it to me anyway, would you? <clears throat> uh, Williams... I think maybe we uh, better move along. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Mr. Clinton. It was while I was buying the car that the questions began gnawing at me. Questions about Hugh. When the war in Vietnam began, he had been one of the first to be drafted. He shipped out very soon after his induction, and then nothing. No word, no trace, nothing. The Red Cross helped me, but all we could learn was that he was missing. Missing in action, they said. Mm -hmm. And then, as years went by, presumed dead. But I waited. And I felt myself drying up. Aging without him. Not bad. This is it. What name do you use? Mrs. Walter Brewer, Trenton, New Jersey. Slide over. I'll drive. Do you have a license? You've been away a long time. Yours isn't good now either. Has your right name on it. What's the difference? If we're stopped, that's it for both of us. Mercy, just the way it used to be. Yes. Just the way. After we left Mercedes.
Mercedes Turner's father, Chief Novak, had someone else he thought I should see. A woman, Clara Goldwater, had been close to Mercedes in high school. Clara was married now, wife of a foundry worker in Mountain Forge. I'll wait here. Their home was a squatting, shapeless bungalow in a shabby, genteel sort of neighborhood. You've seen a million places like it. Mrs. Battles? Yes? Yeah? You used to be Clara Goldwater, a friend of Mercedes Clinton? Oh, yes. Yeah. My name is Williams, New York Police. Chief Novak is out in my car. May I come in? Oh, yes, come on. Ah, she's Thelma. This time of day, she's cranky. Sit down, please. Thank you. What do you want? A little information about Mercedes Clinton Turner. Whatever for? She's disappeared. Just gone? Something like that. Oh, my goodness. I know you're busy. This won't take long. When did you last see Mercedes? Oh, not in ages. Years. In high school. Then we sort of drifted apart. But you remember her well. Oh, yes. Such a beauty. Mm. <laughs> Never say that about me. I was the plain one. But we were real close friends, at least for a while. And then she went her way and I went mine. Settled down here. Uh, you ever meet her husband? Robert Turner. What kind of man is he? Quiet, when I saw him. Quiet, kind of. A kind that broods over things? Did he have something to brood over? Hmm, might have. Do you think Mercy's in trouble? Real trouble? Yes. She's in a great deal of trouble. Enough to make me break my word? Mrs. Battles, if you know anything at all, you should tell me. Oh, Mercy made me swear. Really, swear on the Bible. I'd never tell a soul. Even after Daddy found out about it and broke it up. Yes? Well, Mercy was married before. Did Albert Turner know that? Well, after it was over, after Daddy broke it up, Mercy wouldn't talk about it. Not a word. So I don't suppose Albert Turner did know about it. How long ago did this happen? Oh, long, long ago. Years ago, it seems. Back when the Vietnam War began back then. They ran away to get married. I was supposed to be a witness, but I couldn't go at the last minute, and they went ahead and did it anyhow. Who was the man? Who'd she marry? A boy she met in Prester. Well, she was going to school there? Must have been so long ago. I remember he was poor. And they were both awful young and so much in love. They were going to keep it a secret. Uh, what was the boy's name? His last name was Rohan. Can't recall his first name. Uh, what a pretty picture they made. In what way? Well, she was so blonde, and he had red hair, flaming red hair, like he was on fire. This is Marvin Miller inviting you to be part of a historic event. On September 22nd, the Paramount plays again. The Paramount Theater of the Arts in Oakland has its benefit premiere, bringing together on one stage one name act after the other, featuring music, dance, and comedy. Tickets for this benefit premiere on September 22nd will range from $25 to $250. For reservations, phone 452-4167. That's the ticket. You drove carefully, partly because you wasn't used to being behind the wheel, and partly so we wouldn't do anything to make a policeman stop us. We drove south without even discussing why. I found myself staring at him. At the flaming red hair. The boyish face. Tired now. Worn. He must have felt me staring at him because he shifted in the seat to look at me. That's when I saw that he was still carrying the gun in his jacket pocket. Hugh? Yeah? Should you keep the gun? Shouldn't you get rid of it? Uh, no, I... I have to keep it. You'll see. See what? Well, if, uh, if anything happens, if anyone tries to stop us, break us up, now that we've found each other again, I may need to use it. 
Because there's nothing in this world can take can take you away from me again. Hey, remember Rehoboth Beach? Yes, of course I remember. That's where we're going. A second honeymoon, Mercy. Huh? It's winter. Will anything be open? <laughs> we don't need more than a room. And the police won't look for us there. All the police are watching for right now is a single woman. They don't know about the car, or the jersey place in the car, or about me. We're going to have our second honeymoon, Mercy. According to Clara Battles, Mercedes Turner had met her first husband while she was a student at the Bentley Collegiate Institute in Preston. I drove up there and then called New York to tell Scores what I'd gotten. So she may not be alone, huh? She could be traveling with this red-haired guy, Rohan. I suspect that's true. Otherwise, why did she run? Well, panic. After spending the night with her dead husband? This isn't a lady who panics. Okay, Will. I'll add him to the APB. Right. I'll be back late tonight or uh, first thing in the morning. Yeah, we'll see you then. Oh, Will. Yeah. Hold up a minute. Something just came in. Hey, what do you know? The lady went to her bank this morning, closed her account, and took a bunch of stuff from her safe deposit box. Well, that just goes to prove you can't live on love alone. See you. I pride myself on my ability as a police officer. I like my job, and I think I do it well. I've learned in the years I've been at it that a good cop gets a fix on a suspect, begins to empathize with the suspect, and pretty soon it's as though the person you're looking for was carrying a homing device. You begin to zero in on him. I began to get a feeling about the red-haired man. The Prestatown constable steered me to a place called the Snack Bar, where the Bentley girls hang out after classes. It's run by a nice old man, Clement Beatty. How long we been here? Oh, my, we've had the place for years. You recall a young fellow hung around here back before the war? Uh, his name was Rohan. A red-haired boy? That's him. Oh, yes, yes. He was with us for about a school year. Worked here in the shop for me and the missus. Why'd you want to know? I'm trying to locate him. Where's his family with Well, it seems to me out west someplace. Or Middle West, maybe. Ooh. How do you happen to work for you? Well, he was planning to go to Annex to college up in Royal. Came down here to see about a job. Mother and me leave a standing invitation, you know, register as Walters up there for a deserving boy to help us out. Why was he so far from home? He wanted to be a doctor. And Annex is one of the best pre-med schools in the country, you know. Yeah. Do you recall a girl at Bentley about that time, Mercedes Clinton... Pretty with blonde hair. She was very close to you. Oh, yeah, sure. Was that her name, Mercedes? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, after you closed the shop, the two of them used to sit back there and talk to all hours. Oh. Uh, you know, young kids in love. Yeah, I recall one night I was cleaning up in the kitchen, couldn't help overhearing them. They were making plans, you know, for the future, how he was going to be a doctor. They were going to have a family. How did it all come out? Not very well, I'm afraid. We rented a tiny cabin at Rehoboth Beach, close by the water. And that night we slept in each other's arms for the first time since you'd gone off to war. I was awakened later. I don't know what time it was. By the sound of a sudden storm. Lying there, I was aware that she was also alive. Mercy? Yes, sir. Why'd you marry Turner? Did you love him? No. Not ever. I married him because... I don't know. You didn't love him? Never. In fact, for the last few months, I've hated him. I wondered how to get away. But you married him. Yes, dear, I married him. Because there no longer was you, and all I wanted from life was to be protected. I didn't want love or pain anymore. Mercy. Yes, dear. He was right, you know. Your husband was right. About what? I was a convict. I am a convict. I escaped from prison last week. Tomorrow at this time, rest your eyes and listen here to 
for this week's continuing study in suspense, The Wife of the Red-Haired Man. I'm Rod Serling. Today's episode brought to you in part by Quaker State and Presto. This is the Zero Hour on Mutual Radio. You have been listening to The Zero Hour, a presentation of the Mutual Broadcasting System in association with Hollywood Radio Theater, heard every weekday at this time. Rod Serling is your host. Zero Hour is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. The Hollywood Radio Theater theme was played by Ferranti and Teicher and is now available on United Artists Records and Tapes. Hugh Douglas speaking. Tune in tomorrow and once again... Rest your eyes and listen here. To the Zero Hour. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.